Good morning, Hello. everybody, and thank you for coming, um, for joining in in this webinar. Today we're going to be talking with Raul and Abbas, the uh, project leaders for the OWASP PHP security project. So without further ado, I know they have a lot to talk about, and they're really excited about their project. So uh, I will turn it over to um, Raul and Abbas. Um, hello and good morning people. Uh, my name is Rahul Chaudhary and my uh, colleague here is Abbas Nadiri. He's the uh, current chapter leader of Iran and currently a PhD candidate. I myself, uh, I'm a master's student and about to graduate in like 10 days. So uh, anyway, this talk today is about PHP security and uh, here we have made an application which started in Google Summer of Code 2013 and uh, our job was to, uh, we actually focused on OAP top 10 and uh, our goal was to do something about each of the uh, risks that is uh, cited in top 10 and uh, at the as an end product we have made uh, a project called PHP Security which is called PHP Set and uh, today is that demonstration. So. Uh, uh, let's get started and Abbas please join in whenever I'm wrong and uh, and if you guys have any question just just feel free to ask anytime uh, I'll be stopping and pausing in between the slides to ask you but if you just have any question just go ahead and and start asking so uh, let's start so as you can see our website is phpsec.org. You can visit that anytime, and uh, you should actually because it will give you it will give you a hands-on uh, view of what the project is. And uh, okay, so moving on. So um, as you can see, our uh, logo is a good one <laughs> with an elephant, and it's phpsec. And uh, this project was started in Google Summer of Code. I've already told you. If you want more information on any of these speakers, you can click on the links, and uh, you will be taken to their home pages. Um, and so the first question is, why should we start a new project? There are many open source projects which are that are out there doing the same kind of amount, same kind of thing. But uh, why? Why just a new project? Why PHPSec is better than others? So uh, there are obviously a few reasons. First, I want to tell you that there are uh, projects out there, and they are open source. Something like OS ASAPI, which is very famous, and you can uh, you might be hearing about ASAPI a lot. There is PHP IDS, um, but the thing about them is that they over the time they have become complicated and a huge huge uh, combination of framework which. Uh, which is uh, very difficult to, which is actually very big, first of all, and very difficult to incorporate in your system and use it. Uh, we needed something which is much more smaller, compact, and easy to use, something like in a snap, you can just use it. So what we did was, instead of making all of, like, Isapi is, com is a complete bundle of everything, uh, all security, uh, you know, things, you merge together and a bundle, a box that comes uh, with everything. But PHPSec is little, little libraries that you can just use any of them. These are decoupled without any dependencies on each of them. So for example, you are facing some problems with your session and you don't want sessions to be exposed to, to some third party or some attackers. So you just download our session library with ISAPI, it was not the case. With ISAPI, you have to download the whole bundle, and you either have ISAPI or you don't. This is not the thing with PHPSec. This is one of the major, uh, you know, major good things about our project. Uh, PHPSec is extremely flexible. We uh, the components do not rely on each other. They are just standalone. So if you want to use two, three components, just go ahead, do it. You don't have to do any other changes. Just, just use it, just like that. It's a plug and play library. As simple as that. Um, we have also made a sample framework for uh, the community because uh, if you just want to use it like Isapi, the whole complete bundle, you can do that also. So uh, that is that is that depends on you guys and what your organization needs are. And uh, so, 
who is our target audience? I think you know better than me because you are the audience. Uh, um, I guess any PHP developer who, who is new to this PHP and wants to start a new application, a secure application, they, they should use it because uh, uh, it's robust. It would, it would just take a lot of matters from your hand and it will just implement a secure thing everywhere. Uh, if you just have existing project but you are worried about security, you, you don't have to do much changes in your code. You can just include our libraries in there and it will work just as fine. Uh, if you are a project developer, anyone who wants to know more about security, uh, in, you know, any developer who wants to join in, anyone. I mean, if you are in security in short, just come and join our project. It's new, it's exciting, it's backed by OS. I mean, it has anything that any security person should want, at least for me. I <laughs> um, okay, uh, PHPSec is not SAP, so we, I think I have already made that clear because SAP is a complete bundle, PHPSec is decoupled libraries. Uh, I do want to make a disclaimer that uh, this project, like, it's in initial phases and I would like uh, say that uh, you have to use it your own risk at least at first because uh, uh, you know it's the library like we have very few people we are trying our best to, uh, to handle every test case but you know humans do mistakes and uh, if something gets lost from your organization something sensitive then we are not liable uh, at least in the beginning after that who knows uh, similar libraries is something that uh, we have uh, searched online of who is doing what and uh, we came across these three libraries that that are almost same as ours. First is the J framework which is exactly similar with our library but it is made by Abbas Nadivi and uh, J framework is built on top of PHP sex. So when PHP sex was being made, uh, Abbas Nadivi as uh, my colleague as you already is in the speakers list. Uh, he, he also made started make, uh, making a J framework which is more of a framework and not the couple libraries. So he started, it's kind of a testing environment for PHP set, it's built on top of PHP set. Um, there's other library uh, called, uh, unfortunately, called PHP set. It is an open source a license under MIT. Some guys, I guess, made it and its name is same as ours, but it's the overall project is not same as ours. Some of the libraries match, something like session libraries match and user library match, but uh, uh, a lot of things are different in our own project. Uh, there's a third library which you can go in the link and check out. Uh, so uh, be sec, I've told you a lot about it. It's a collection of libraries and uh, it mitigates top 10 risk of OS. So let's get into gory details. Uh, this is the overview of how the uh, PHP set works. Uh, you can see that uh, it works on the MVC controller. MVC design is one of the famous designs in web, web applications. So uh, PHP sec is PHP sec is built on uh, top of that uh, MVC view. So what happens is that you have a controller, your model, your view controller deals with the um, outside the user request and uh, it passes request to model and view. So this this thing is the view of the overall framework, how that framework works inside PHP. Uh, inside the framework itself uh, depends on the lot of libraries which are the decoupled libraries as I told you earlier. So here is the list of all the libraries that you can see. Uh, uh, so there are logs library, crypto library. Each of the library does something about OS top 10 and uh, I will talk about each of the library in just a few minutes. Uh, I would like to just point out some of the basic things that uh, PHPSec uh, is used to mitigate. Uh, some things uh, brute force attacks won't be in your system if uh, in your application if you implement this. Uh, there is something called, uh, you, you would have seen a bank application needs a temporary password of uh, two-way authentication system. Uh, uh, these things are implemented. You won't have XSS attacks. You won't have uh, any injection attacks, including uh, SQL injections. You have, uh, I guess, uh, a lot of uh, encryption is used to uh, in, you know, encrypt your sensitive data. 
you have safe passage to the database, you have uh, the, uh, you know, uh, some capabilities to mark such uh, uh, things that you are not sure that are correct and should be in the system. Uh, a lot of things are there. I mean, I think you can read it in your own time. I will get uh, when I will get into the details of everything. You will see how each of the things work and what I'm talking about. If you're just confused right now, there are session things that are mitigated. Uh, there are many attacks. You can read all of them, and I will go through each of them one by one. So first thing is basic password library. This is one of the standalone libraries that uh, we have created. It uh, it's its job is very simple, but inside it's complicated. So what it does is that it secures your password. As you all know, passwords are very important. I mean, it's it's the only authentication system that is uh, present here right now, and you need to keep them safe. So uh, there are only one or two ways which you can keep your password safe from hackers. It's just that you have to uh, you have to uh, you know defend them from the brute force attacks. For that, you have to make them difficult to guess and for that we have uh, we have made uh, several functions that, that helps you do that first function is that uh, we calculate the entropy of the password what entropy means is that how much randomness is in the password so we calculate if, uh, if you give us a password what is the randomness of your password and if we do not allow uh, ordered characters something like a b c d in your uh, in your password. So, you know, these are the signs of weak passwords. Phone numbers containing in your password is a weak password. Um, so we uh, we have a collection of functions that checks for these common things that should not be in your password. And ultimately, it calculates the strength of the password and it gives the numbers between 0 and 1, in which we consider that a below 0 0.3 is something called we call a weak password. and 0.3 to 0.5 is a decent password and after that it's a strong password. Uh, so you can choose your password based on these strength. Uh, also in this library we do secure hashing of the passwords and uh, uh, this way uh, you have uh, like the the uh, developer that is making a library or making a web application doesn't have to worry about how to secure or how to securely uh, store the passwords in the table. It is already done automatically. Um, uh, with all these mitigation techniques in the basic password library, the, uh, the thing is that the password guessing is still not eradicated because anyone can do still do a brute force method, but at least now you have some degree of protection. And uh, since it's an uh, open source project, if you have any other method of uh, you know making the passwords much more secure, just join in and contribute because uh, right now we are uh, we are building the libraries and we are thinking of more functions and uh, in time this this whole library will uh, will become large a lot large than it is now um, on top of basic password library we have made advanced password library which which handles with uh, which handles with protection of brute force attacks uh, and uh, also handles the two way authentication system so this contains functions for you know, mitigating brute force and uh, implementing two-way authentication system. Uh, I would just ask you guys if you have any doubts till now. Uh, I guess uh, I guess not. Uh, okay, so let's moving forward. Uh, the next library is user library. Uh, every every web application that does any meaningful task and needs personal personalization has to have a user library uh, so a user uh, so you when you implement this uh, our PHP sec you already get a user library for free and uh, you have this functions of registering or deleting or adding users you know uh, uh, locking their account checking the checking the length of the passwords and how strong their password is and how long they have not changed their password which is called password aging and some things like you see functions like remember me functionality when you log into some website these functions are present there you can use it and just by seeing that you can now realize that how easy it is becoming to build, build web applications now because now you if you want to just 
create a user, you, you have to write one line of code instead of all the 10 or 20 or 50 lines of code. So it, it is making your life easier and uh, you don't have to worry about security because security was the first thing that we kept in mind in making these libraries. So uh, now I think you are getting to the point where you understand how uh, how PHPSec is going to change anyone's uh, anyone any developer's life. Uh, the next thing I would like to talk is the crypto library. So uh, obviously you have a web application and you have uh, a lot of sensitive data in it. By the way, this image you should read it. It's really funny. So uh, this is just a fun part that that I included. It's it's really funny. <laughs> so uh, you have a lot of sensitive data in your application, right? You have uh, version numbers, you have database password, database username. So all those sensitive information. What if someone hacks into your server and if they can see your code? Then they can then they will know your database password and uh, you know they can do really really nasty things. So what this triple library does is that you mark the places where all your sensitive information is present and this library after its first run it will encrypt all that all that things all that sensitive information so that even if your server gets hacked uh, these things are not uh, you know these things are not uh, actually uh, guessable because they are encrypted and uh, uh, every time the uh, application needs these uh, uh, these data to be accessed, uh, the uh, the library does automatically decrypting, uses the data, throws the data, and then re-encrypts them. So it, it's it's really secure and um, uh, yeah. So this is about the sensitive data, and you won't have to worry about if anything is out there in the open because everything is encrypted now. And by the way, you can also encrypt all of your source code if you want. Uh, this is the way the sensitive uh, library works. Uh, so, sorry, crypto library works. So the thing is that uh, below you will see a green line, a normal data. This was the first, uh, this was before implementation. So that uh, you see that uh, in normal data, if you don't implement our own library, the data flow is just normal. There is nothing encrypted. Anyone can read the data, but not in a crypto library case. You have the sensitive data. It is passed through the crypto library. It is encrypted, and it is not seen by any humans, not even the developer, because that is encrypted after its first run. So you don't even have to worry about sharing your code. If you just want to share your code, don't worry. Your sensitive information won't flow anywhere because it's encrypted, and uh, the application decrypts it. Uh, within itself it doesn't show the decryp decryption part to anyone. Um, here is one example of how this library is used. Uh, you can see that the original file contains a username and a password and uh, uh, you know uh, you as I said you have to mark your things that is uh, that is uh, sensitive. So the marking uh, function is called confidential string. Once you encapsulate this string into the confidential string after the first run, you can see in the third line, uh, third paragraph, that the uh, sensitive information root is changed into something encrypted, and uh, the password is also changed into something encrypted, which cannot be seen by anyone. Okay, uh, moving on to another library, database library. You already know databases are important. You need to store your information, retrieve it, but there is a problem. <laughs> And by the way, this is another graffiti that you should read. It's really good. Um, so with database library, uh, you need libraries and you need to make them secure because half of the time in, in, in OS top 10, I guess since last three years or something, SQL injection is the, is the uh, most uh, targeted thing in any web application. So you. I think I guess you realize how important it is to just keep your uh, database secure and make secure connections for, to your database. Uh, currently, uh, we our PHPSec supports these three uh, these three databases. We are working hard to include more databases, but right now, I guess uh, for demonstration purposes, these three would work. Uh, what we have done is that we have made a wrapper class uh, around all the 
databases. So for example, let's take MySQL. And so for MySQL, we make a native wrapper class that uh, that is used to connect to the database. Um, the good thing about uh, MySQL, uh, you know, our database library is that you don't have to you don't have the option to use three or four functions. I mean, that's a headache. Instead, we have uh, you know. Uh, uh, removed all the query details, everything, and we have made the wrapper function in such a way that you have only one function. This function that you can see in the bottom called SQL, you will, uh, you can use this function in various ways because it's overridden. Uh, you can um, uh, by using this function in various ways, you can do all the database tasks, and you don't have to worry about many other functions because there is only one function to connect to the database. Uh, you know, uh, behind the hood, this function uh, is working in, in collaboration with the appropriate adapter, and that adapter is doing all the groundwork for you. So. Uh, with, and uh, using this, as you can see, these, this is using parameterized query, and I guess you all are familiar with parameterized query. Uh, if not, it's one of the useful concepts that you, you should look. Uh, it's really handy and easy. So uh, with SQL, you, uh, this, this function uh, uses parameterized query, and thus you are safe with the SQL injection attacks. Uh, one of the our libraries is called Download Manager Library because uh, the need of this library is that sometimes uh, when you are serving files to the uh, to the uh, you know audience to any audience uh, you are serving some files and some audience will have uh, greater bandwidth and some will have less bandwidth so the greater bandwidth usually hogs up all the network bandwidth and the person with low bandwidth. Uh, you know, low internet speed is uh, is not served the file, so you know there is a discrepancy that is happening between the high end users and the low end users. So this download manager libraries does uh, a lot of things, and one of its thing is to manage the bandwidth. Uh, you can also use it for authorization before serving the file. So. Uh, you know, when you are serving the file, you can check that whether this particular user should be served this file or not. So, um, I guess a short form for this is access control, and I, I will talk about access control a little bit later. Um, it it uh, works on the HTTP range. If you just want to know the code details, uh, uh, you can just go to the library uh, and you can read the code. Uh, so, um, we have made this HTTP library. So. Uh, you have URLs, and URLs is that uh, you have to uh, you have to manage that URL. You have to take that URL and read that request. Something that URL says login, then you know that you have to log in the users. Uh, so uh, you know uh, this particular HTTP library works with the URL. So you can do what whatever you want. With the URL uh, in this function, in this library, you have functions something like uh, uh, which type of uh, what is the IP of the uh, you know once you are given the URL, it can extract the IP information, root information, and uh, it can look into the HTTP methods uh, uh, requests. Right? Uh, it can uh, it can check which type of application it is. Is it graphic uh, application? It is a call from command line. Uh, you can change the HTTP protocol to HTTPS, and there are actually many many uh, functions in this library which entirely deals with the URLs. So uh, this is also a handle library. Uh, I guess uh, to know more about this library and to get a good feel of what this library does, you would have to go through the codes and or you have to see the sample applications that we have built to demonstrate this library. As far as you know, verbally speaking, uh, this library is more of a, uh, I guess, uh, deals with the URLs mostly and, and the uh, details of your uh, of your type of application. Uh, you have something called tainted library. So, uh, thing is that uh, 
Uh, we believe that when you are making some application, you need to keep track of some of the strings because string is the only place where you can do input and uh, this is the place or you can say point of attack for any for any web application. And um, so uh, with this tainted library, you can actually mark all the places where where you feel that the string is not, uh, you know, not sanitized, uh, or maybe it is a contaminated string, so you can mark that string. And once you mark that string, wherever this string is used anywhere in the web application, it will just throw an error saying that you are trying to use a string that is not decontaminated. It means that if you use this string in your system, the string is not trustworthy and it may hack your system. So, uh, what example, something that you see uh, dollar malicious is a variable and this variable contains this following, uh, following script which you know that is not healthy for your system. So, what you do is that you contact, you uh, you contaminate this particular variable. Now, every time this particular variable is used anywhere in your system, it will just give you an error that you have not, this this variable is not good to you, then you should first sanitize that uh, particular variable. With sanitization, I mean that you should detect that whether this string is trustworthy or not, and if it is not trustworthy, you should sanitize it, you should clean this string uh, to be it trustworthy. Now, uh, uh, an obvious question is that how would you know uh, which uh, which variables are good and which variables are bad? So the answer is that you don't. Uh, but uh, as just a matter of principle, what you can do is you can mark every place where the user can do input. So uh, any variable that the user gets, you mark that variable, thinking that this variable is not trustworthy, and you should sanitize that. And in actually real world, you should always do that. You should always sanitize user uh, user input. We have made logs library because we all know that how much logs are important. You need to keep track of all your application and uh, how the behavior of the application is working. And if anything happens, logs is the first place where you will look. Uh, so we have made logs library. There are very very various functions in this library. Um, it can, it actually uses files or database or even emails to store your log information. It also uses syslog, which you must be familiar with. Uh, it, syslog is used by uh, Unix machines and Linux machines to store log information. So there are four modes in which you can store log information. Uh, if, uh, if you want more modes to, uh, to store your logs, we are definitely working on that. Uh, so uh, the work of this uh, log library is simple. Whatever the uh, whatever is happening in the system, just record everything in in one of these uh, one of these systems storing storing mediums. Um, and this is uh, this is just an example. I've stored the library. I've stored the error messages in the uh, uh, in the database. As you can see, this is the uh, I guess uh, this is the format that you that it is stored currently in the database, but for your information, this format is entirely customizable. You don't need to have it in the particular order. If you want to add more columns to it, go ahead. You can add more columns. It is 100% customizable, uh, which is one of the very good things in uh, in PHP set. Uh, and uh, we have something called a session library, And uh, uh, but before starting this, I want to ask you, uh, do you guys have any any particular uh, questions on this? Um, okay, so uh, it's not going to take much time because this is one of the last libraries that uh, we are going to talk about. Um, so the session library is uh, uh, is uh, it handles every problems with the session. The session have uh, different kinds of problems. What uh, what trackers usually do is they can hijack session, or they can do something called fix the session, or uh, maybe that uh, sometimes uh, the developers don't uh, do mistakes by not checking that the session has expired or not. So this whole library is built in such a manner that it is 
implemented in one of the most secure ways and we constantly keep it updated to uh, to the threats out there so uh, obviously uh, you won't have session fixation attacks and the uh, uh, proper validation of sessions are done every time uh, every time the uh, you know the server sees the session and uh, uh, we have many other functions, something called a session drawing, uh, which uh, which checks the privileges of the session and uh, you know uh, changes the session if it finds that. Uh, uh, let me be very clear on this because it's uh, it's a little bit of a difficult concept to handle. So you have sessions. Uh, the thing with session is that they can be uh, they can be you know stolen. So that is called session hijacking. The way we deal with this is that uh, currently, uh, currently there's not much to uh, to do in that field. Uh, we uh, do encourage to use HTTPS uh, to uh, so that your traffic is encrypted and your sessions are not stolen. With session fixation, uh, we do uh, we do proper checking. Uh, to remove session fixation attacks, you can uh, you can first read about session fixation, and then you will easily understand by seeing our course that how we deal with the session fixation attacks. Um, then we have something called session drawing. At the reason this is important is because uh, sessions are uh, uh, you know uh, suppose you are a, you logged into a particular website, uh, but you are a general user. Uh, you actually have not logged in per se. Suppose you uh, you are visiting the eBay website and uh, you are just going through all the products, but you are not logged in. In that case, you are a general user. But as soon as you log in, you are now a privileged user because you are now a customer. You have now provided your credentials. So uh, you know uh, you're authentic. You're obviously uh, the uh, the ability of this particular user has changed. It is no longer a general user, and for this reason, uh, uh, you know, he is now a privileged user. We say so. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the session needs to be changed so that it now reflects that it is, it is a privileged user and not a general user. For this session, rolling is implemented, so you don't. Uh, the developers don't need to worry about session rolling because this is done automatically uh, uh, to the uh, in the uh, in the library uh, and uh, I guess that we have said that our libraries are standalone libraries but uh, there is one particular library that is shared between all other libraries which is called the code library uh, code library contains some uh, Core functions that are used by all of the libraries. These are very very small functions. So uh, there is something called a time library, which provides a central time to the overall web application because we know that it's very difficult to uh, change system time according to the application because changing system time actually uh, uh, you know doesn't work very good with other system because you might be running Kerberos on your system or any other application that depends on the time and if you change time even for testing purposes and for this particular uh, you know uh, web application uh, you are going to mess up everything so th we have made a wrapper around the original time function uh, and our wrapper deals with the uh, you know provides you the current time and if you want to change time if you want to move to future and move to backward uh, this wrapper function can do that. We have made a random library uh, which deals with uh, generating secure random numbers. Uh, yeah, within the hood, we do use a major random number provider, something called OpenSSL and Encrypt. Uh, we also uh, infuse that uh, OpenSSL and these libraries with, uh, uh, with process IDs within your system and other methods to make it more secure. We have something called an error library because if you are not familiar, then you should know that 
uh, in PHP there is there are two kinds of things. Uh, it's either an exception, it's or it's an error. So you know there are two two things that can happen in your system. Either an exception can be generated if something happens wrong, or an error can be generated. Now most people are not familiar with errors because we are used to dealing with exceptions. Um, and, and error needs to errors are not thrown automatically. They need to be thrown in the PHP. So this particular error library deals with the uh, deals with the uh, uh, I guess uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it deals with uh, converting the error to the exception so that it can be thrown automatically. Uh, we have a library called functions library. You might be remembering that in the uh, uh, in the tainted library, I talked about sanitization that you should always sanitize your data. So using this, using the uh, functions, uh, using the functions in this functions library, you get some, uh, uh, like you get some functions that uh, uh, that if you use, you will not have XSS attacks. So it it actually sanitizes your data so that. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about XSS attacks and uh, you, uh, you won't have any scripts in your uh, user input. And finally there's this loader library which is used internally by the framework. This is not a part of the core libraries but it's kept here. Um, this whole slide I have explained to you in short because I guess we are short on time. Uh, lastly, there is uh, something called a scanner tool. We do provide a static scanner which scans through all of your code and sees places, you know, identifies places where uh, bad things can happen. Um, it is uh, uh, something like, uh, uh, okay, so uh, it's better if I just show you. Um, it has two display styles. It can either show in GCC style or it can show in normal style. So you see that I have scanned my own library, and uh, it says that in within this uh, within this particular function in this line number, it has detected that I am using echo, and by using echo, uh, I am actually vulnerable to XSS attacks. It is written here that using this statement, it can cause injection attacks. And uh, uh, you know, it also says that what kind of uh, this uh, thing it is. So it says that it's a warning. Um, we are uh, we are just. It was one of the uh, one of the errors that I just showed you. There are many more errors that you can uh, you can detect with this. We are constantly building this library. Uh, if you just want to know how this library works and how it scans the code and for what things it scans, uh, it is all in our documentation and in our, uh, uh, I guess, uh, the codes. You can read the codes. And uh, uh, I would like to talk about the future works. Uh, immediately, we are going to incorporate PHP RPAC, which is one of the projects made by Abbas Nadiri. Um, it is role-based access control. So I told about access control in downloads manager library that you need to check who is who is uh, authorized to access what links. Uh, so RPAC is just that. Uh, it checks the access control. We are going to implement a cache control library. Um, if you want to know what this library will do, you can read our documentation because I guess we are low on time. Uh, there are many other libraries that, uh, including the secure soap and rest library that we had planned to do, but we are short on manpower. So I guess uh, uh, I guess I would invite you all to just come and join the library. If if not, just read the library and use the library and inform us of anything that is not good there. Uh, if you want it changed, so that's what the fifth point is that. It depends on you what the future work is because I guess you are the future of this particular library. Um, these are some of the links that you can use uh, uh, to know more about this particular library. Um, it has uh, main links, website links, OVAS links, and every other links. It also has QR codes if you want to scan it. And uh, lastly, this is the last slide that. Uh, uh, 
So if you want to rate this particular presentation, you can definitely go to this particular link and rate it. I would very much like your feedback and thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. So feel free to, uh, to just ask anything. I guess uh, I would hand over to Abbas to uh, make any final comments and correct if I have told anything wrong. So Abbas, would you like to join in? Oh, sure. Thank you, Rahul, for your great presentation. And we really enjoyed it. Okay, people, I'm here to answer any questions you might be having. Um, th this is Kate. There was one question. Rahul, can you please? There, there was one question. Is PHP set different from lowercase PHP set? Uh, okay, so uh, I guess you are talking. Yeah, go ahead, please. Can you please mute? There's a lot of noise coming from this side. Uh, I'm sorry. I uh, do you want me to answer it? Can you mute? Yeah, can you mute the microphone because there's a lot of noise coming from your side. Um, I guess there's a connection problem because I cannot hear you properly. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll try to answer. Okay, can you please repeat the question again? Yeah, I just put the uh, question in the chat window. Is capital PHP sec different from lowercase p? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I got the question. So the thing is that in the very first slide I showed you some of the libraries which are similar to our libraries and you're talking about the lower PHP sec which is licensed as the MIT license and uh, uh, I guess some of the libraries are similar to ours. I guess, uh, as far as I know, a session library was similar to ours, but our library has much more functions uh, different from that library. And uh, I guess that that particular library, I don't see much of the uh, traffic in that library. And so I guess that whoever made that library is not doing any more work on that. Uh, is from a different perspective, you want to know about the difference. It's just that I guess it supports only the session libraries and one or two other libraries. Our is a superset of that. We also contain session uh, logs and uh, very other other libraries that and that helps you. In a uh, any other any other question? Um, yeah, there was another question, and I put that also in the chat window. Um, is the entropy in class random part of the library core better than the entropy of PHP standard function? Okay, so um, within the PHP uh, uh, random function entropy is not there in the entropy is in the basic password management library uh, and entropy tells you the uh, the amount of randomness that you have in your system and this particular function uh, I think the formula of calculating entropy is same for everyone so it's not a huge difference it's just that uh, it calculates it helps us calculating the randomness in your uh, in your uh, particular password Hello? Yeah. Okay. That that was the only okay, yeah. that was the only other question that we had. Um, oh no, somebody just asked where will the slides for this webinar be posted? Um, we're going to be replaying this webinar again later tonight, and so these will be posted tomorrow. And I'll be sure to send out um, a link to this. But um, Raul, if you have these slides available, do you think you could just go ahead and post them on the PHP um, project what, wiki page? Uh, in the, yes, in the second last slide, in the link section, the very last link is the project presentation. You can go and uh, have this presentation 
there. Okay. You can also access that on the project website, phvsec.org. Okay, perfect. So the slides then will be on the on this particular listed site as well as on the project page. Exactly. And of course, if you have any questions about the PHP project or what what um, what's going on with the project, or if you want to contribute to the project, um, feel free to reach out to either Raul or Abbas um, at any time, and you can find their information on these slides, or um, you can reach out to them through the um, project web page on the wiki. Okay, so uh, and I just want to say that our our links are present in the very first slide that I showed you about us. So my and Abbas link both are present, and our contact information both are present in the website as well as in the first page that I showed you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so if there are no other questions, um, that will do it for the rest of today. And um, again, we're going to be replaying this webinar later this evening. Um, and then it will be posted to the project page um, as well as the wiki page. Thank you for joining, and um, we'll see you for the next webinar. Thank you.